Hello, hello, hello. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in this great big universe. My name is Helena. Thank you so much for being here today because if it wasn't for you, these videos would not be possible. So please do consider if this video inspires you, it would mean the world to me if you could click like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell to get more content like this. So before we get started, I want to let you know that today's video is for educational purposes only, and please be polite in the comment section down below. Always be polite and always have an open mind, which is a sign of enlightenment. So wherever you are, at school, at work, at home, at the Starbucks, shopping at the mall, always be polite, especially down but leave me a comment, leave us a comment and let us know where you're from, what brought you here today. So today's guest is extremely special to me. She is a good friend of mine. Her name is Ayana Sue of Ayana Sue Street Therapy. And if you're wondering what she does, she does something very unique. She has some very unique modalities. If you're trying to change your life, create a shift, rapid transformation in your life, and you watch other people seem to be manifesting their life just seamlessly, and you go, how did they do it? What is their secret sauce? Well, some people in this world pay hundreds, even thousands of dollars for tickets to motivational speakers. Well, Ayana pours her heart out and shares her secrets with you every single day on her YouTube channel. Please, after you watch this video, go check out her YouTube channel. She's great secrets to manifesting your dream life. So um, let's go ahead and see if she's here. Hi. Hello. Your camera's not on. Hello. There she is. The woman of the hour. Ayana, <laughs> thank you so much for being here. I'm a, I am a super fan on oh, your Instagram and on your YouTube channel. That is where you give away a lot of the secrets that people pay a lot of money to get when they go to like motivational speakers or maybe they go see Tony Robbins. I love him. But you pour your heart out every single day, dropping pearls of wisdom for people. And I just want to say thank you. This woman, by the way, has taught me a lot, so much. So Ayana, do you want to tell our listeners and viewers, what is it that you do exactly? Okay. I am a mindset transformational coach. So I help people shift their mindset out of like negative thinking, repeating old patterns, being stuck in the same cycle, stuff like that, into manifesting or aligning with the life of their desires that is awesome and yeah. let me tell you before I met Ayana I was stressed out I felt like I couldn't really accomplish much I had worked for a very long time to try to you know live my dream and live my best life and I just kept getting stagnated like I would cap out in motivation I met her and the energy that she gives off is literally contagious. And does she sell her services? Absolutely. You can find those on Fiverr. But also, like I said before, she drops her pearls of wisdom on her Instagram and her YouTube channel. So after this, go to her channel. You'll find <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so Ayana, what are the kind of issues that most people come to you wanting to change about their life? Or do they know? Or are they just kind of kept out? Like a I lot of times it's love and career, um, which is typical for most people. Um, and for love, a lot of times it is holding on to old attachments. Uh, fear of loss, a lot of people suffer from that, which is understandable. Labeling their relationships. Um um that can be a problem sometimes mm -hmm. and of course career a lot of people are very confused about what they want in their life and I know a lot of it has to do with how many of us are raised where uh, sometimes we have parents who want to live through us or sometimes society encourages us to do uh, or go a certain path in our life that might be completely different from our passions and our desires so that's what I, I usually get from these people it sounds like a lot. And I know exactly what you're talking about because when you and I first talked, I was like, yeah, okay. So I want to know, I want to change the world and do a lot of good. <laughs> yeah. Yep. And 
a lot of people I have noticed hold on to old relationship patterns, old, you know, they get stuck in that rapid succession kind of a pattern with a relationship that's not serving them. Can you give us a couple examples of some of the things that you've helped people with before? Um, usually it's been like toxic ones. Um, and I know that for sure. Cause on Quora, I talk a lot about like toxic relationships. That's I know a lot about that because I have my fair share of toxic relationships. I've you also, been it. yes, I've also dived, uh, deep dived into narcissistic personality disorder, other personality disorders, mental health disorders. So I understand how some people are in relationships with people with those issues. And it can be very hard to manage at times. And sometimes it's actually best to walk away from that person. It's hard for people to understand that. And also, newer to me, codependent bonds, something that I'm recovering from myself, something that's very common with people, um, just unhealthy codependent attachments to people. So those are the things that I try to give information on and help people out with. Everything I learned from Codependence Anonymous, I share to people who may need some recovery. Um, same thing with narcissism, understanding their tactics and what they do, which is easily overlooked, unfortunately. So those are some of the few things that I I mostly focus on as re in regards to relationships. It's just the type of attachment that it is to that person. Sorry if I'm coughing at you guys. I have a cold. Sorry. And yes, Ayana actually is one of the more loved. You know, you know her. She is one of the more loved writers on Quora. She does have her own Quora space called True Love and Life, which I will link down below for you. She posts in there every single day, just these amazing wisdom, wit, pearls. <laughs> and one thing about Ayana that helped her that I noticed, because I've watched her evolve into such a spirit who offers so much insight to people. She knows quite a bit about spirituality. Do you want to tell us a little bit about that? Oh yeah, of course. So um what the funny thing is, um, as you know, as we all know, I am twin flame on the twin flame journey. And mm -hmm. I was awakened because of that journey, but I began my spirituality or spiritual practices in high school, believe it or not. Um, I started as a Buddhist and I began to get a better understanding of the self. Um, later on, I began to get a better understanding of, of God, and that was through my spiritual awakening. And attachments to souls, other souls, something I never had considered before. Like, I didn't understand soulmates fully. I didn't think much about it until I met my um, catalyst or false twin, as commonly known as that. So it awakened me to different spiritual connections with soulmates, um, you know, love soulmates, pets, animals, sometimes karmic soulmates and negative attachments that you have to move on from and clear karma from. Um then later on, I ended up um, getting more into Hinduism. It, it had been calling me all my life. I just never answered the call, you know? <laughs> it was like ring, ring, ring. And finally, I was like, hello. So <laughs> that's, that's literally what happened. Um, and so through that, I've learned new manifestation techniques and understanding God on a, a different level or different from what I've ever learned, what is popular, popular uh, around where I grew up and stuff, where most people tend to be Christian, which is okay, but it just wasn't it wasn't for me. Christianity wasn't for me. And so I found my path through uh, Sanatana Dharma. That's what it's really called. Uh, commonly known as Hinduism. And I've been learning more and more every day uh, with it and using the spiritual practice for the benefit of all, honestly, and for myself. So, yeah. I mean, I could go on forever and ever about all my <laughs> spiritual stuff, but... <laughs> Well, yeah. one thing I noticed about you that you share a lot with people, and one thing that kind of stunned me, I was watching one of your Instagram reels, the or the Instagram live, sorry, and I saw that you were speaking about how how re related to karma, being nice to animals makes a huge difference. Yes, and can you tell us a little bit about that? Because because that was one that just it struck my heart. Yes, I would love to. So I have noticed personally and also through my own choices in life that we tend to have this hierarchy. Many human beings tend to have this hierarchy thinking when it comes to animals uh, because we have a difference in 
species in general, you know, um, which is very different from just a difference in language. Um, like we are from people to people. Mm -hmm. It's a whole different species. And so we don't connect to them the same way. And I think because of this disconnect, especially since we live a more modern life, most of the times people spend their days inside all the time. Um, they lose a disconnection from the the need of a balance around earth. And so when we're disrespectful to animals, they have souls. In my opinion, they have souls. Mm -hmm. And I agree. Yes. And many people think that our souls are somehow better. I think that's just the ego. I feel like God all made animals equal. And all animals, including us, because we're animals, <laughs> all animals equal. And it's very right. important for us to respect them. Um, to and we don't respect them. We don't respect them as a as a whole. Um, we overeat them sometimes. Um, we're abusive towards them. We lock them in cages. We we drive them out of their homes and then get mad when they come in our homes. But it's like we did that to them, you know. Um, there's just so much of that. And one of the main things that I learned when I became a Buddhist, that was the first religion I ever got into. And when I became a Buddhist. One thing that was really struck me in my heart, and this was years ago when I read it, it said, all things are deserving of a life. And I believe that to the core. And I was like, you know what? All things are deserving of a life. Um, I do care about animals. And it's actually what ultimately led me to becoming a vegan. Um, but that took some years before that happened. <laughs> and um, I noticed just like, even now recently, I live in my car right now. And me living in my car, at first it was very distressing, but I realized it was such a big blessing because I was more in tune with nature. Uh, I, I was forced to be outside, especially during the summer, you know, to walk barefoot sometimes and see the squirrels running around and the raccoons raiding the garbage cans. <laughs> and I just saw the, 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 I almost want to say humanity in them. I know they're not humans, but it's like, I saw how, they're like us in a way. They're just trying to survive. They're doing what it is to survive, but they're also coexist with earth a lot better than we do. They don't do the things that we do, like destroying the planet and tearing up things and all kinds of stuff. They don't do that stuff. So I think that our lack of respect from animals has made it where we don't learn from them and, and practice what they practice, which is a lot more sustainable for the earth. Um, so yeah, that's why I made that video. Um, and you know, again, I'm also a vegan, but I try not to be one of those crazy vegans who go all crazy. You know, I was never, I wasn't always a vegan. So, so you're not <laughs> the kind of person like, that's gonna, you're not gonna come up to me in a restaurant and go, "Did you order the steak?" Yeah, <laughs> yeah, no, no, that's not me. When I first did a little bit, I will admit, but that was like how many, almost ten years now, believe it or not. So ten so years ago. Evolved. Oh yeah, I've definitely evolved. <laughs> yeah. So. One of the questions, which reminds me, you, you mentioned karma. A lot of the questions that I've been getting, people hoping to ask you this question would be, what can people do to improve their karma or maybe get rid of some of the negative karma? A lot of people believe that they, they are born with or develop while they're living karmic ties, even in relationships. Is there anything yes. you can suggest that we as people could do to improve our karma? Yes, indeed. Um, just go through it. I mean, I don't know. That's the best way. Um, and when you go through it, though, here's the thing that I had to learn for myself, especially with karmic soulmates. When you go through it, you cannot go with what your first instinct tells you to go with. And I say this because when you have karma in your life, especially if it's past life karma, sometimes this karma has been relived many, 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 many lives. And so when it comes to you again, your first instinct might actually be reliving the same karmic pattern that you had in your past lives. So you don't want to do that. Like for me, I'll give a personal example when it came to my uh, karmic soulmate, who's a catalyst. He triggered within me, um, he had passed, I had a, actually had a reading done from a psychic and on these lives. And she said that we had a, a repeating life of the healer, and wounded relationships. So one person was the healer, the other person was wounded, and we tried to fix each other. It switched. It wasn't always the same. Wow. A lot and, of back and, and forth yeah. over multiple yes, lifetimes. But, yes, multiple lifetimes. And in the end, one of us always ended up abandoning each other or can't be together. And then so you know, either we died or committed suicide. It was all kinds of stuff like that. This life, right, it happened again. He was the wounded one, though. He had... Uh, narcissistic personality disorder 
Um, I was very codependent. So at that time, I probably would have tried to fix him had I taken it seriously. Um, and he ended up abandoning me. And what I did, my initial instinct was to, okay, let's just go for it. Let's see what happens. I had oil space for him for a while, et cetera, et cetera. And by the grace of God, I aligned with a couple of soulmates who have been, are still in my life. I, I consider them a soul family. And I had met up with them and they were one of the few people my that I actually knew, no one who knew anything about Twin Flames. So I met them through a, a friend who's no longer a friend of mine anymore. And they said, oh, I just, I never met anybody who was into Twin Flames. It'd be nice to talk to you, et cetera, et cetera. And so we linked up. And when we did, um, I was able to uh, um, talk. I was able to talk about it. And finally, they recommended to me a psychic. And I went to the psychic. She said, oh, yeah, he's not. So I took a different route than I would have. Lord, the old me would have held on, you know, et cetera, et cetera. I opened my heart to something different, you know, something that seemed divinely guided. Because like I said, I knew no one around who knew anything about Twin Flames. Like when I would tell people about it, it was like alien to them <laughs> because... <laughs> They weren't on the path. They weren't on the journey. And so it was so different to me. So I had to let really in that instance, it was like, it's like letting God take the wheel. If that makes any sense. Just going with the flow of what is being what I'm being aligned with. So that is one of the main important things of karma is going through it, but not, but going through the flow of God's guidance and alignment, because I feel, or if you don't call a guy or whatever, a higher power, there is a higher power that leads you towards your destiny, towards the life that you want, that things that they'll bring to you. And many of us ignore it. And they do that even with karma. So with karma, when you're going through difficult situations, you're going through something that seems familiar, that's been bothering you. And a lot of times bad, bad karma, because it's good karma too. Bad karma tends to bother us a lot. Um, yeah, it's like the only thing, it's like we when we notice the good, it's like, oh, thank God, something good happened. But then yes. when the bad stuff happens, we're like, oh my God, the world's ending, you know, chicken little, the yeah. sky is falling. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes. It bothers us. So yeah, you really have to go. And I know a lot of times I say your first answer is the right answer. And that is very true. But when it comes to karmic debt and stuff, it's more of an instinctual thing. Instinctual, a lot of times, is backed by fear. So you have to be aware of the fear that is evoked within you whenever you're facing these situations. It's like, why am I afraid of this? You know, you really have to sit, do some self-reflection um, and do something different. Do something different. Go out of your comfort zone. That's very important when it comes to karmic cycles. Sometimes karmic cycles aren't necessarily traumatic. Sometimes it could just be like, for me, one of the karmic cycles I feel like I'm finally breaking is being un in unhappy homes and not appreciating it. So it really got to a point where now I'm living in my car, the most limited home ever. <laughs> and I have learned, finally learned to make peace with my home, to love it for what it is. And I feel like that's now aligning me with breaking my karmic cycle of these unhappy homes that are falling apart or unhappy people on it, et cetera, et cetera. And I've never been happy in a home. <laughs> So this is the first time. So I feel like now I'm finally breaking that cycle. So it sounds almost like you're getting the universal guidance to, to kind of be happy within yourself. Like this is your home. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. It's yes. your car, but yes, it's your home. And mm -hmm. speaking of which, I know this is a shameless plug, but Ayana, like I said, she pours her heart and her soul into her YouTube channel. <laughs> you guys could go over and visit, show your love and support. She does have a tip jar. I will link that down below too but please do show your love and support visit her youtube channel check her out she is an amazing soul thank you oh, thank you <laughs> so one other and thank you for covering the karma question mm -hmm. i i've noticed that a lot of people are feeling like they're stuck in a karmic loop now you said this could have to do with what we feel safe with because mm -hmm we have just always kind of gravitated toward the same kind of a situation or situations just kind of hit us and we're not listening to our internal intuition that will help us guide ourselves out. Oh yeah, for sure. And um, it, it, it is definitely a comfort thing, even when it's not very comfortable. Um, it's really getting over your fear. Um, and that's why I like to tell people a lot of time, face your demons, because that's basically facing your fears. Your demons yeah. basically uh, bring up the fears within you. And so when you're 
in a cycle that's repeating over and over again, most people, they keep doing the same thing over and over and over again. It's like, you got to do something different. And the one quote that I like to, I love to go by is insanity is doing the same thing over again, expecting different results. Like you, you can't pull that out of my head. See, this woman is so intuitive. She is an intuitive channel. I swear she was, she pulled. Okay. Sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> but yeah, that's literally what it is. So it's like, yeah, you gotta, you gotta change it. You gotta do something to change it up and take a leap of faith. That's one of my favorite. Like when I used to do, um, tarot i don't do it anymore but i used to use playing cards for tarot and one of the cards that come out a lot was the joker upright and that's always like one of the meanings is taking the leap of faith and i remember seeing that especially when it came to me moving to texas where i am now and that's, that was beyond my comfort zone but it was one of the most beautiful blessings of my life and it's because i really had to let go of the fear of the unknown and to just take a leap of faith when i felt like god because i call it god my higher power when god was guiding me towards a new life I kept saying to myself over and over again I want to do like a new life I want my old life to be over something has to change I want a new life I kept repeating that over and over again and so God was like you know what here here's your new life take a leap for faith and take it I could have just kept doing my old comfort zones of the same patterns and cycles over and over again but I was tired of it looks like you froze up for a minute Hello. Oh no. I think she froze up. We have your beautiful face on the camera. Did you freeze up? You have to pay attention. <laughs> there she is. Okay, sorry. The camera froze up. The Yeah, I did see you for a little bit. <laughs> Where are you? Are you in the library? No, I'm in a community center, which is much oh, better. Okay. I can talk louder and more. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So if you had frozen up for just a second, I was like, mm -hmm. could you repeat that last maybe 30 seconds? So that Yeah, I think I said okay. something about um what was I saying? Oh yeah, when you don't know any better, you keep repeating the same cycles over and over again because yeah. you that's what you've learned to do. Like that's the right way to go. Mm -hmm. Um, but it takes doing something. It takes letting go of the ego because the ego likes comfort. Okay. The ego thinks it knows better sometimes. And sometimes it doesn't. Most, a lot of times it doesn't. So it's about letting go of the ego, the thinking mind, the, the overworking mind that's just mm -hmm. planning. And I always, I tell people this too a lot. Stop planning. Forget about planning. But that's, that's a whole other discussion right there. But <laughs> just planning too much and trying to crunch numbers and do that. It's really about surrendering your will, your your faith to God and not in a necessarily religious way like they, you know how religion teaches it. It's more just like letting go and knowing that what you desire is going to happen and following your intuition to make it happen. But when you get too caught in the thinking, the crunching and the fear voice that comes up in your head, repeat these cycles over and over again. That's the karmic cycle. That's the, the life you don't want. <laughs> you know, that's all yep. of these things. That's the limited mindset, the limited words that you say to yourself. Yep. So it's really about just going, just, just do it. Stop thinking so much. <laughs> Yeah. Don't overthink it. Exactly. And just do yeah. what you're feeling. That is so, mm -hmm. the that is one of the things that I know that I had to get over. I had to stop overthinking because I would think, okay, so I'm going to I'm going to make a YouTube channel. And then I would do something and I would say, "Oh wait, what if it ruins it? You know, don't post it. Do you know, do something else." And then and she, Ayana, to the viewers, help me get over my fear of basically moving forward. Cause sometimes moving forward can look like different things to different people, you know, moving forward for one person might be dropping a toxic relationship, releasing connections that don't serve you, bringing in the new connections of your soul family that does serve you who are vibrating at the same frequency of energy that you are and are as positive as you are. And not the people that, drill into your head oh you'll never succeed oh you're rotten oh you can't do anything and so on and so forth could that those are those are thoughts that stay in our mind is so ayana not to go jump in too much has some amazing advice on manifestation mm -hmm. manifestation is her forte can you share that with us yeah i would love to so there's many ways to manifest there's many ways that i have but I can share the general, how can I say, 
the general mindset, say you use no tools. I focus on no tool manifestation. I know a lot of people that like to use spells, mantras, which is all cool, but no tool manifestation is one of the best ways. And one of the ways that I first started to like uh, quickly, rapidly manifest was using mantras. Mantras can be linked to, uh, what do you call it? Uh, a spiritual practice or religion like Hinduism or Buddhism, but it doesn't have to be like that. It could be in English, in your own words. I think the beauty of the mantras that they teach in Sanatana Dharma is that understanding the power of repeated word. So one of the things that you have to do with uh, manifestation is one, you have to think about, first of all, think about what you want. I'm gonna just give an example throughout the whole thing. Actually, I'm gonna give the example of something that I am finally starting to get out of because it was very hard. It's best to give a hard example so that the easy comes easy, right? <laughs> so Okay. Yes. One of the hard ones that I had was struggling with low income, okay? And the low income mindset, the lack mindset, right? That's a big one so, for all of us. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so one of the things I kept repeating in my mind is I'm tired of being poor. I'm tired of being poor. I'm tired of being poor. This was ruining my life. And what happens is, inevitably, I was tired and I was being poor. Why? Because that was the mantra that I had in my head. I'm tired of being poor. I'm tired of being poor. Even though I didn't want that in my life, the way that energy works, it doesn't see what you want and what you don't want and just gives you what you want. It doesn't see it that way. You are the creator of your reality, as they say in the twin verses in the Dhammapada, right? <laughs> you are the creator of your reality. And so you have to say what it is that you want and remove yourself from focusing on the things that you don't want. That part is hard. So let me tell you what I had to do for that. It takes time, but it can happen. You have to, one, one thing I love to do, especially when you're down in the bottom of the barrel and all you see is you see no indication of it improving. And I've been through that. There's times when I was extremely poor, I was starving. I had no money at all. It was awful. And it's very hard to just switch your mind to I'm not poor, I'm rich, right? That's yeah, I I've, I've been there. Like uh, yeah. That that's a very that that's a very far reaching yes. ability to to you know be like looking at your plate and you're like I don't have that much food and but then, I'm rich. I'm rich. I'm full. I'm happy. I'm hungry. Yes. <laughs> It's yeah. almost impossible for most. That's when the ego's because the ego is about survival and you're not surviving when you're in that state. So your ego is fighting you too much. So what I had to do is first, I had to be like, okay, I am grateful. So gratitude is the beginning of shifting out of, um, out of anything. It doesn't even matter. Anytime you want to manifest something, gratitude is like the, one of the first steps. So you're, I had to sit there and I had to be thankful. I said, you know what? I'm thankful. I literally, I kid you not, I say, I'm thankful for the hair on my head. I'm thankful I have two hands. I'm thankful because my foot was messed up at the time. So I said, thank you. My injury is only temporary and I have two feet. I'm thankful that I have a car because I could sleep on the, in the ground. You know, I had to just list off every day, all the things that I was thankful, no matter how minor it was that aligned me with more abundance. So where I could have lost more, which does happen to people, unfortunately, because I focused on abundance, I was in aligning with the energy of abundance. So that already shifted me towards getting more things that I needed and more money, right? Okay. And then so once I got there, I said, that's when that starts to happen. Then you start to see, okay, now I'm seeing the proof that I am wealthy. You know, wealth doesn't always have to be money. So it was more like I'm getting things with monetary value without much effort. I am a wealthy person because I was starting to shift. But I was still saying the mantra, I'm tired of being poor. So the mantra had still needed to change. So I actually had a wonderful person. She's on Instagram. Uh, her name is Coach Valj. Coach Valj, yes, on Instagram. She helped me a lot. She said, I had a phone call with her and she said to me um, um, about the poor, being poor thing. She said, let's try a gentle mind shift where you've been saying, I'm tired of being poor, you can instead say something, I don't I don't know verbatim, but it was something along the lines of, I'm tired of being poor has been the story that I've been telling myself, but I know now that I'm going to change now today or something like that, because I know my, my words create my actions and my reality, et cetera, et cetera. 
And I was like, okay. So anytime I started repeating that awful mantra in my head, I'm tired of being poor. I read that to counteract it. So it was oh, almost like, yes. A, so that is a great, that is a great option to have in your arsenal for mm-hmm. resetting your mind. So yes. you, cause you can't really control your thoughts a lot of the time. Cause you know, you're mm-hmm. so stressed, you're at work, you got your kids, you're dealing with you, got to feed the pets, got to clean the house, got to go to work, whatever. And you don't have time to sit down and really think about your thoughts and reset yes. your thoughts because you're so acclimated to having the same thoughts over and over yes. inundating you, but you have that piece of paper that you can pull out, counteract it. Yes. Counteracting. So that's another tool counteracting the thing that is creating havoc in your life, basically counteract it because it's not easy to just turn it off. It just right. doesn't, that doesn't happen for every, it could for some, but it's not for everyone. It does so not happen for me it. all the time, but it does work. <laughs> yes, exactly. So I had to counteract it. So as I started to counteract it anymore, I started to realize, okay, I'm not thinking this as much. It's like, I actually became, I didn't have to look at her paper as much anymore. I began, or what she sent me, And I began to just have it. It's almost like reprogram. This is where the reprogramming your mind comes in because you're putting a new, it's like a mantra. You're putting a new mantra in your head, right? You already set the intention to forget the old mantra. So it helps boost it a bit. And you have to know that you can do it. I actually made a video about that today. You have to know that you have the ability, well, not today, some other day, but (laughs) the ability (laughs) to make it happen, right? So you always, just know that now, you always have the ability to make anything happen, happen. Okay, so know that. But yeah, I shift to that. And then once I shift to that, then I started to, then I got into the the Lulu, right? The, (laughs) I make $7,000 a month. No, I don't make $7,000 a month, (laughs) but I can see the proof of that happening. I can see myself getting to that because now that I've shifted from my reality, from poor, poverty, nothing, and tired all the time to seeing more abundance in my life, because I have that evidence, I can now shift it. So this is the hard manifestation, you know, because sometimes we have things that are so deeply ingrained in us from childhood that is so difficult to get out of our heads. And so you really got to learn to counteract that. It's the same thing. I have issues with making friends sometimes and feeling like people like me as a person. Um, that, That's some deep, 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 deep childhood wounds. And so I've been counteracting it. So for me, one of the things I like to say is when I have that and I said, oh, nobody likes me, blah, blah, blah. It's, and I start to feel like I'm don't, I'm not loved. So now what I do is I say, God hit me with love. It's like, I don't feel love. So I need God to hit me with love. And I kid you not, that is the most amazing. Matter of fact, that's a great tool for anybody. It, with any struggle that you have in your life, ask God to hit you with, or a higher power, whatever you believe in, ask them to hit you with love. And that can, it just washes over you a different feeling. Like, it, it stops you from thinking that, I don't know, it's almost like a magic word. I don't know how to explain it. <laughs> so, it is a magic word because love is the, I feel like anyway, love is the mm-hmm. universal vibration. Like all people are inherently good and we all mm-hmm. vibrate from a frequency of love. That is yes. amazing. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. God hit me with love or higher power, whatever whatever you use for yourself, whatever your spirituality is, hit me yes. with love and then open to it. Mm-hmm. Yes, <sighs> exactly. So those are the one of the main things. There's other ways too. Like I said, um, I love Hindus mantras. They're very helpful. But always, no matter the religion, spiritual practice you follow, make it something you believe because belief is one of the biggest things in manifestation. You have to believe it. Yes, it's the key. It's what opens the door literally to manifestation. You have to believe it without a shadow of doubt because when the doubt comes in, it's counteracting. It's almost like saying I'm rich, but I'm poor at the same time. The right. universe is like confused. And so it just keeps you neutral. <laughs> it's neutrality at that point. So you that have to believe is it. wisdom. Yes. The universe will keep you stagnated and neutral in a holding pattern mm-hmm. like an airplane if if you don't shift the mindset. If you yes. have two conflicting mindsets that are going, one is saying, I don't, I'm coming from a place of lack. The other mindset says, okay, no, I'm doing my mantras. Everything's going to be okay. Mm-hmm. It's going to hold you. Got to make yes. that shift. It's going to hold you. And for some people, it's very hard to do that. And that's where it comes to asking for help. Surrendering to a higher power is very important with manifestation. Ask for help. It doesn't matter who you believe in. Ancestors, spirit guides, God, Yahweh, Allah, whatever you believe in, ask for help. 
ask for help and it will know that the help will come. The help will come and just listen. Just listen and pay attention. Pay attention, pay attention because the signs will be there, okay? When you open your heart to God, God will never abandon you, never. As long as you keep your heart open. So that is a big thing of manifestation. Open this heart. is no tool manifestation right here. <laughs> <laughs> That's yes. easy. That's see, it's for Ayana. She's made so I've watched this woman make great strides and okay. help other people make these great strides. And I want the same thing for you guys. And so please do visit her YouTube channel. Please do visit her on Instagram, like, and subscribe, share this video if it has inspired you, because again, these videos are only possible because of you and we are out of time, but I want you guys to go check out her channel. I will link it down below. We will see Ayana here soon, very soon again. Bye. Thanks for having me. You're, Thank so, you and you're so wonderful. Much for coming. Bye. Bye.